topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Who is January Jones? She is not a young, beautiful, talented actress on Mad Men. She is not an older, gorgeous, exotic dancer from the Johnny Carson Show. She is an author, and she wrote, Thou Shall Not Wine, The Eleventh Commandment, that reached number one at Amazon.com. She is a reality TV golf personality with World High Stakes Golf televised on HDNet. She is a humorist and winologist expert. She is your featured host today on January Jones Sharing Success Stories. So sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and listen to Ms. Jones with her eclectic roster of guests as you learn life's lessons. These stories plus sharing equals success. Welcome and remember, beware. Because you are entering the no whining world of January Jones. Hello, I'm January Jones, and I'd like to welcome you to our podcast today. Now, for my listeners, let me ask you a question Do you own your own business? Tell me, have you ever wondered what it would be like to make money? (laughs) To make more money is what I mean. (laughs) Can you imagine, just try to imagine what it would be like to raise your client's fees? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Would you like to learn how to raise your client's fees without losing your clients? That's the trick. (laughs) Do you wish you could meet someone who can tell you how to do it? If you can answer yes or maybe to any of these questions, then you are in the right place. And I'd like to welcome you to January Jones sharing success stories. So now it's time to relax and rest. Go get some wine and cheese, get some crackers so you can join me in the no wine zone. Now, let me tell you a little bit about my guest today. My guest is a trailblazer. She is known for getting results fast, faster than the traditional methods. Her clients get results faster too. They often see results in the first two weeks or two. She combines her years of experience as a corporate account executive and sales mentor with the art and science of buyer psychology and ethical persuasion. It's my pleasure to welcome back to the show someone who's been on the show many times in the past. Welcome, Jan Wellen. Wellen. Waylon. <laughs> Thank you so much, January. I'm so glad to be here again, seeing you again. Oh, yeah. Well, as uh, we said before we went on the air, it's such a treat to get to actually see people. Um, You know, that's one of the things that I I think is a uh, byproduct of the pandemic. It's one of the things that uh, I've appreciated. I've appreciated the one-on-one contact with my guests and with my fans. Tell me a little bit uh, briefly how the pandemic affected your business and any changes you had to make to how you do business. Very good. Excellent question. Um, It actually did some good things. I had the opportunity during the pandemic to take a sabbatical and I stepped completely away from my business for a while. And doing that really gave me time to think, really slow down and think about what was really important for me. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I realized during this time was it's always concerned me how entrepreneurs, many entrepreneurs don't know how to ask for money. 
they undercharge and they don't know how to raise their fees or work with their clients in a way that they keep on getting more money. So that's why I decided to write my book, Raise Your Fees Without Losing Clients. Right. Yeah, that title says it all. It says it all. And you know, it's so true that looking back, I, I call it the pandemic pause because the entire world just took a great big pause and everyone reevaluated and found new outlets, new directions, uh, actually new inspirations, which obviously you did. Mm -hmm. um, I think raising fees has got to be one of the toughest things for me or for most people in business. Isn't that true? Yes, it really is. It's not easy to raise your fees. Um, and that's why I've created in my book and in my consulting services resource tools and things you can do and specific ways to work on raising your fees that make it easy. Mm -hmm. How long did you uh, did you pause? How long was your pause during the pandemic? <laughs> uh, my pause was about half of the pandemic. I would say about six months or so. Okay. okay. And part of it was you you mentioned I love how you called it the pandemic pause because it simply was a quiet time where we couldn't do the things we were used to doing and I think mm -hmm. it made everybody refocus mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think the entire country actually let's face it the entire world has really uh, regroup and get renewed energy a lot of people have told me that this pause caused them to have inspirations and new directions. Uh, when you did your pause, were you completely off the, the internet, or how did you how did you how did you pause? <laughs> it was it was a complete pause, except for I did have the internet, uh -huh. um, and and that that was actually good, as a matter of fact. Uh, and what what I did actually, I also read read more books. I got back to reading more books. Mm -hmm. um, and having the internet was at the same time I was taking a pause. I was looking at different things. I I, I love a lot of things on YouTube, and mm -hmm. so I was learning things and looking around at what was going on and what people were doing. So I really enjoyed having the internet and also. We now have Zoom meetings that are very easy. We, we vid do this video conferencing now that we didn't before. Mm -hmm. So that we also have had to learn to do, have meetings and things like this a little differently than in person. It's not quite the same. No, no. And that's actually what, you know, I had gone on the pause before I even had a reason to pause. <laughs> I had I had gone on a hiatus and I said, oh, you know, I'll be gone for about maybe three, six months. Well, mm -hmm. as things worked out, it turned out to be three years. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and of course, my shows were still uh, I was still on the air all the time, but they were obviously replays and none of okay. them were None of them were live, but then this is what enticed me to come back when I had the opportunity to do these live one-on-one -on -one encounters. Mm -hmm. And now I'm doing one show a week every Tuesday at 2 p.m. where before I took my hiatus, I was doing uh, six shows a week, which was insane. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah, so I, I, I think I had what's called burn out, burn along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but I can now, understand that. Yeah, but now I'm back once a week, and it's very doable, and it's oh. so fun to reach out and see people and see people remaking themselves, and uh, your topic about how to raise fees is so timely because I know in my experience, I was always embarrassed to ask mm -hmm. for more money, and is that a pretty common thing? Yes, you're absolutely right. It is very common. And uh, many people hesitate because of that. Also, it could also be because you simply don't have the courage or confidence to, mm -hmm. to raise your fees. What I'm finding also is with my clients that they also don't know what to say. Yeah. So, okay, I want to raise my fees. You think about, yeah, I want to raise my fees. Mm -hmm. Only then, where do I start? 
What do I say? And another, maybe even more important thing is people don't always understand the value they bring to their clients or to the companies they work with. And yes. it's not something you can't just, I've, there are programs out there that simply say, okay, go raise your fees. Well, that doesn't work that way because smart people want to understand why they're bringing value and why they're raising fees. It's not just raise your fees. So, yeah. so yeah. It, it's, it is really hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think that it's a, a big stepping stone for you to enable people to get some direction and to help them with this. And your book is a fantastic book. I've had a chance to look at it. Oh, and I'm really, I'm really happy that we can talk about this and spread the word mm -hmm. because this is something that's so important. And I think it helps people get their confidence. And, uh, you know, the can, I like that, your can do attitude. I love the way you approach it. You know, speaking of can do, right now, we're going to talk about my book, Thou Shalt Not Wine, the 11th Commandment. And I'm very pleased to announce that it's now available at Amazon.com again and Audible.com. We'll be right back. Lately, there's a whining epidemic in our world. People are even whining about whining. Are you sick and tired of listening to everyone whining all the time? So was January Jones, the author of Thou Shall Not Whine, the 11th commandment that reached number one at Amazon.com. Ms. Jones based her book on a survey of the top 10 things that people whine about at all ages and all stages of life. January is a success coach that can tell you how to help others. When you buy Thou Shall Not Whine, the 11th commandment, you'll find out what people whine about and how to stop them from whining. This is the perfect gift book to give or get for any occasion. Thou Shall Not Whine was voted the best gift to be given anonymously for those special people in your life. Ms. Jones is an internationally known author in the style of Irma Bombeck, specializing in housewife humor with her book being published in Korea and China. You can find Thou Shall Not Wine at Amazon.com. Welcome back with my wonderful guest, Jan Whalen. Jan, could you share with our listeners uh, your contact information and how they can get a hold of you? Uh, for consultation and also how they can, where they can find your books. Cause I know you've written other books. Yeah, yes, actually. Sure. Um, the best place to, to reach me is my website, raiseyourfees.com. That's raiseyourfees.com, just like it sounds. And my email is jan at raiseyourfees.com. Also, you can connect with me on Facebook and Clubhouse. Okay. And do you have the book right there on your desk, I hope? <laughs> I certainly do. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's a wonderful cover. Uh, you know, it's, it's you. Covers are, as you know, they're so important. And I love a color that tells you exactly what the book is about. So yeah. there's, you know, no surprises. And we'll post that information on the bottom line during the show so people can copy it Good. down and follow you. Now, you know, the thing about raising fees, and you know, I'm sure you hear this a lot, people will say, well, I want to do it. I tried to do it before and it didn't quite work. And they're a little uh, gun shy, don't you think? Oh, that's a really, really good word. And yes, a lot of people do that. Um, one of the things, that's actually one of the, the reasons I developed a framework of five simple steps to the income you want. When you put something that's not so easy into a framework like that, step by step, it may, it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And part of it is, you're, you're right, people are gun shy and they're questioning. And whenever we do something new or we want to do something new, especially if it's scary, like raising your fees, the, the, there's this part of our brain that starts asking questions and comes up and says, you want to raise your fees? What? Are you crazy? <laughs> you can't do that. 
<laughs> what do you, what, who are you? Who do you think you are? Right. And they're all these, so, so part of it is to realize those voices are going to come up. They come up for everyone who does things new. Now, if you do the same thing every day, day after day, after day, after day, you probably don't hear those voices. I don't know anyone like that. <laughs> <laughs> so for myself, for example, I had to get used to those voices the first time I raised me fees. I did that actually when I was in corporate the first time. And then yeah. since then, I've done it a number of many times. But the first time you have to say, okay, those voices are coming up. Mm -hmm. It means I'm doing something new and that's okay. Okay. Don't let the voices stop you in your tracks. Okay. And uh, so what would, let's kind of go, I'm taking notes. So let's go through, I, I know that's the only way I can remember I these days. If I don't write it down, it's gone. <laughs> so what would my first step be? Okay. The first step is, uh, um, the, there, every step in my framework is outlined in my book. It's called the value framework. The first thing is to talk about value. Okay. And the way you do that is talk about results and outcomes, not oh. how you work with people, but the results that you help them get. So I have a saying here and you can quote me on it. Okay. When you talk about outcomes, your income goes up. Oh, I love that. <laughs> when you talk about outcomes, your income goes up. So write that down. Okay. Outcome, so, income. <laughs> yeah. And so it, there you are sitting, you want it, you've thought, been thinking about this and decided I want to raise my fees. Mm -hmm. Sit quietly, say that sentence, and then take out a piece of paper and start writing down. What are some of the results you've already helped your clients with? Okay. Okay. It could be something if you're a consultant, it could be helping them raise their, increase their sales. Uh -huh. Or if it's uh, in an area like wellness, health and wellness, you might help someone lose weight. Well, how much? You want to be specific. Or if you're helping a company increase their sales, be specific. How much? Just brainstorm as many results as you possibly can. Uh -huh. And then add those results to your elevator speech. Okay. Everybody I love has an elevator speech. Now, let me you you on, make money with it. Uh, yeah, I'm with you now. I'm ready. But with on results, how important is it to use uh, statistics? Because I'm always looking for advertisers for my shows. And, yes. you know, since I've started this uh, with YouTube, the show has been averaging 180,000 listens per Ooh. month. So I think it's important to share statistics and how much should you share when it comes to numbers, your numbers? Really good, really good question. Yes. What you're talking about when you're looking at statistics, you're looking, are they really getting results? Have they been getting results <clears throat> for other people and other shows? If you can see by the numbers that they are, if they simply just said, come to us for ads and, it, and without the statistics, it's like yes. you're not, it, they're not as believable. So numbers also add to your credibility. Mm -hmm. So if you have results, that's why I say be specific. How much do you help someone lose weight? How much weight? How yes. much do you help someone increase their sales? So the numbers of, I, I, for example, if you know that you've helped a company increase their sales as much as 25%, say that in your elevator speech. Mm -hmm. Don't simply say, I help companies raise their, their, raise their increase their sales. Yeah. Uh -huh. How much? Now, the other there's a caution here that's very important. We can't guarantee, no matter what results we've achieved in the past for our clients, we can't guarantee that the next client is going to achieve those same results. Mm -hmm. right. There are too many factors involved. So I recommend saying, I help clients increase their sales as much as 25%. Okay. The 25%, whatever number you use, be sure it's a real number. You want to be honest and talk to yeah. and not prompt. So as much as 10%, as much as 25%, or as much as 15 pounds. 
to, to be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. and if someone asks you about it, you can say, yes, I helped a client achieve that. And you don't talk about exactly who the client is. You're, you you want to keep confidential information confidential. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And I think it's very important by using these figures and numbers, you're giving people a concrete idea of how, what you can do, what the exposure. You know, if you were to advertise on my show, I'd have to say, like, how many networks and, you yeah. know, all the different stats. Yeah, and that would give people. Uh, and as you as you said, these have to be real numbers. You can't just pull them out of air. Can you? Right. Yeah. Now I will say, you you wrote me. I was so glad to get your invitation to be on your show. So glad to be back in touch with you. Mm -hmm. And I read your very nice email. And I as I read down, you mentioned how many shows, how many guests, how many listeners, how many places that it can be heard. That really shows me a lot about your show. Um, I'm a, a, a guest on a number of po many podcasts now. Yeah. And all of them don't say that. And so <clears throat> if you say it up front, it's it's claiming that you you do something successfully. Yeah. Well, you know, it's been quite a I've, I've taken some tips from you all through the years. <laughs> and I, I'm proud to admit that you're a wonderful help and you've given me a lot of inspiration. And you're right, because putting those numbers out front, it you know, at first you seem to well like you're being a little boastful, but I think the actual reality is you're telling people exactly what they need to hear. Yes, you used a wonderful word, boastful. Yes, we ca it can sound boastful or sound like bragging. And mm -hmm. that's tough for a lot of people. Here's the thing. If you really helped a client increase their sales or someone lose weight, or in your case, the number of shows and everything, like you said, mm -hmm. if you've done that, it's a fact. Yeah. A fact is not bragging. Okay. A bragging is like expanding and exaggerating. And if it's, if it's a fact, you've done it. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's not boasting, it's reality. Yes, it it's reality. <laughs> And it's been so wonderful to come back and have this exposure again, because I have to admit that letter that I sent you is kind of a form letter. You know, I kind of try to personalize it. But since I've been doing this, every person I've invited to come on the show has eagerly accepted. Yes. And I've had no rejections whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I usually only invite people I really like. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, and I think that helps too. Yeah. So now we're going to take a little break and we're going to hear a little bit about who killed Kennedy. Who do you think had the motive, the money, and the means to commit the perfect crime? Let me ask you a question. Are you still wondering who killed Kennedy? Over 50 years later, the assassination is still a mystery. It is unfinished business for our country. Now, get ready for a theory that you've never heard before, but will make more sense than any other conspiracy theory that you've ever heard in the past. January Jones speaks the unspeakable in her book, Jackie, Ari, and Jack, The Tragic Love Triangle, connecting Jackie and Aristotle Onassis romantically prior to JFK's assassination. Did you know that Ari was Jackie's guest in the White House during the JFK funeral? He was the only non-family member who was invited by Jackie to stay there during the funeral. Aristotle Onassis was one of the wealthiest men in the world, with the means, the motive, and the money to order an assassination that was the perfect crime of the last century. Ari needed class, and Jackie needed cash. They were perfect for each other. Now, what is Camelot? It is but another tragic love triangle. Jackie, Ari, and Jack is available at JanuaryJones.com, Amazon.com, and Audiobooks.com, read by Ms. Jones. Welcome back, and I'm pleased to also announce that my original Kennedy book, Oh No, Jackie O, 
is being brought out again for the can you believe 60th anniversary of this assassination 60 years and it's being brought out at audible.com as an audible book so we'll look forward to that in 2023 i'm back with my wonderful guest and friend friend jan whalen now jan we were talking about the five things so you had uh first i have value and then i have a, a big star over elevator speech go briefly what this elevator speech should entail sure um the biggest mistake entrepreneurs make with their elevator speech is using a formula that simply doesn't work. Most elevator speeches talk about who you work with and what they want. So for example, if I were to use my elevator speech with that formula, I'd say, I work with B2B entrepreneurs who want to raise their fees. So what? It doesn't say I do it successfully. Uh -huh, okay. That's where it makes the difference to say, I'll say it again now, I, I, I've elevated my elevator speech when I add results. Okay. So here's my elevated elevator speech. Mm -hmm. I work with B2B entrepreneurs who want to raise their fees. For example, when one client called me, he talked about, People didn't want to, when he introduced himself, no one came over to find out more. No one wanted to meet with him. Mm -hmm. So he was telling people, I do PR. Well, there are thousands of PR people out there. There was no mm -hmm. reason to contact him. Mm -hmm. Well, we worked together and found out his expertise DNA was crisis management PR. That's a very special specialty. So after he started saying he does crisis management PR, clients came to him right away and he was able to book the biggest and most profitable client in his company's history. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That gets right down to the meat of the issue. Yeah. That's like the elevator speech I would use would be basically that I'm helping people share their success stories to millions of people, you know, right. through the, through the, and then in the podcast, I, it's, it's just amazing how they've exploded because yeah. before we would say, Oh, I'm on radio. I'm a little on TV. I'm this and that. But now if you don't have a podcast, you're, you're not in the market. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. It's amazing what's happened. So what do you say? Well, how do you counter when people say, okay, Jan, I, you know, I hear you what you're saying, but you know, your fees are already too high. What's your answer to that? Uh, there is one of, when you hear that and you might, we all have, or will pause, pause Stop a minute breathe and then say oh you're saying my fees are too high how do you mean tell me more okay okay you want to find out what they really mean there are lots of words that we can hear such as they could say we don't we can't afford that mm -hmm. or it's not in our budget or it's more than we were expecting the words can be different you want to know exactly what they mean by that. Do mm -hmm. they mean it's not ever possible okay. or do they mean it's not in the budget this quarter because we're working on a lot of other projects okay. and once, once that's finished, then we can address it. You're yeah. losing opportunities if you don't find out why. why. And then there's one other thing. If they say, if you find out that they don't have it in the budget right now because they're working on some other engagements, you can say, well, what, what services that I've proposed would you like me to take out for now and we'll do it another time? Okay. That lowers the fees without lowering your fee. It lowers the amount the clients pay without lowering your fees. Okay, now go back and redo that one again. Okay. Okay. So let's say 
Uh, I talk to my client and they say, oh, your fees are too high. I'll say, oh, you're saying they're too high. Tell me more. How do you mean? And they say, well, you know, we have so many projects going on right now. We can't put anything else in. So I would say, okay, let's look at this again. What part of this engagement would you like me to take out? For example, okay. we're having training sessions every quarter. And they say, well, let's take out one training session and we only have three training sessions. Mm -hmm. okay. That lowers the amount that they will pay, only it doesn't lower your fees. Oh, okay. I get it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes the project smaller. In effect. No. Yeah. But the same, same rates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was thinking it would help to say, you know, the reality is you can't afford not to do this. I, uh, that's another, that's another excellent one. And again, the first thing you want to find out is what do they really mean by this? Mm -hmm. They may not realize how much it's costing them to stay where they are and not solve it. Yeah, you can't afford not to do it. And then I would think another approach would be to like uh, ask uh, ask to them to anticipate uh, how much they would like to earn more. So ask what they're making now, and then say, well, let's add what twenty five percent to that hypothetically, yep. and yes. that would give them something to shoot for, or would give them yes kind of a, a insight into what the possibilities are. Yes, definitely. Yeah. The conversation about fees, that can be very tricky, can it? Yes, it can. Yes. <laughs> uh, the, the, when you're comfortable with the idea of raising your fees, and, and, and I was mentioning before, when you want to write, when you want to raise your fees, take time to write down some of the results you've already helped your clients with mm -hmm. that in itself brings awareness and you say oh you know look i really do help my clients get results that in itself builds your confidence and your courage so how do you then go, the next step is what to say yeah how do you go about uh identifying uh the I, your ideal client how do you narrow it down to who you could approach or where do you find them? Oh, that's an excellent, excellent question. Yes. Um, many people have a description of their ideal client. And sometimes it's, it's a large group of people. Like I work with entrepreneurs. That's mm -hmm. way too large. You want to think if that's your your target client is entrepreneurs. Well, which entrepreneurs exactly? Some questions to ask yourself. What do they want to what results do they want to get? And then ask yourself, can I help them get those results? So your ideal client wants something that your expertise can help them with. Okay. And mm -hmm. the fastest I'm all about getting results fast. Yeah. The fastest way to do that is to offer something your clients already know they want and they will pay to solve. For example, the title of my book, Raise Your Fees Without Losing Clients. Mm -hmm. I took a long time and a lot of research before deciding on that title. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. knew people, almost everybody wants to raise their fees. Yeah. And <laughs> entrepreneurs are the ones that don't want to lose their clients. So my in that that narrows my niche down some to some degree. Another really important question to ask when you're talking to someone, have they already brought an expert in to help solve this problem before? Okay. If they have and they've paid someone to help solve it, that's a good sign for you. It mm -hmm. shows you that they value the expertise of someone enough to pay them to help solve it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who want to get information, only it's not important to them to bring someone in to pay to solve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a that's a 
your title is an absolutely brilliant title, and I can see why you took the time to get it right, because it says, I, I love a book that tells you exactly what you're going to be looking at, what you're going to yeah. be reading. Um, it's priceless. Speaking of priceless, I would like to share with everyone two of my books that are about priceless personalities who have been on my shows in the past. Have you ever met someone who was unforgettable? Someone who has touched your heart and soul? People who have faced difficult problems? People who have struggled to find solutions? People who fearlessly shared their stories? People who have not only informed you, but inspired you? People who have priceless personalities? I have been fortunate to host an internet radio talk show called January Jones Sharing Success Stories, and it has been my privilege to interview hundreds of guests. My guests have shared their stories, their struggles, their secrets, and their successes in their own words. In this book, we're talking about people dealing with problems such as incest, molestation, runaway kids, child abuse, drug abuse, polygamy, unemployment, scandal, and starting over. Then there are my guests dealing with difficult physical struggles such as blindness, cancer, and birth defects that are beyond traumatic. My guests have all been exciting, eclectic, and energizing. They have amazed, amused, and even astonished me. I have adored getting to meet them, and I adore sharing them with you. Attention all listeners, Priceless Personalities, Success Stories Shared by January Jones, Volume 2 is now available at Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle editions. You'll be able to meet 10 amazing people who will be sharing their own personal stories with all their struggles, successes, and solutions sprinkled with lots of humor and hope. Priceless Personalities features a teenager who becomes one of the famous Supremes from Motown, a nurse who has a humorous helps people to heal, an inspiring laughter yoga instructor, a mother dealing with the loss of a child, an incredible motivational speaker, a woman who married five times, a gifted paranormal nurse, a wise economist, a funny female humorist, along with an older man sharing his sweet childhood in the deep south. January's guests are all amazing and amusing. You will never forget meeting them. Go to Amazon.com for your own priceless experience. Welcome back with Jan Wallen. And we're having such an enjoyable afternoon sharing her new book, Raise Your Fees Without Losing Clients, which, as I said earlier, is positively brilliant. You know, what is the key? Uh, you In your book, you talk about uh, CEO language. And how do we go about learning? About, I know buying your book would be the best way. But yeah. <laughs> whole thing with just a few tips <laughs> yeah, that that would that would be the best um yes. I, i'm i'm really very specific about that in my book i'm specific about all these things in my book uh, the ceo's language is results and outcomes and roi or return on investment a ceo of a company is responsible for the company's profit and health staying in business Mm -hmm. So what they're interested in more when they most when they hear your elevator speech is the results you help your clients get. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with a company one time and um, actually my very first position as in it was a sales account executive. And so I was talking to chief marketing officers about the product that I was selling for, for this company. And we were getting we were increasing company's sales as much as 25%. And so in my elevator speech, when I would meet a new chief marketing officer or CEO, if that was the case, I would say, we help companies increase their sales as much as 25%, right in my elevator speech. So that's talking exactly to them right up front. That's what they want to know. Mm -hmm. CEOs also don't have a lot of time. They are very busy people. Mm -hmm. So if your elevator is speech is sort of stumbling around and, well, I work with companies um, who do marketing and they 
want to have more clients. And if you stumble around like that, the CEO doesn't have time for that. Right. Whereas if you say, we work with companies and help increase their sales as much as 25%, that gets their attention right away. And mm -hmm. they say, oh, how do you do that? Okay. And do you also provide, uh, I would imagine, testimonials would be a big help. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they'll, they'll, they, and that, that's one of the things that they want to know. Um, exactly like, oh, you have, what industry were they in? How, what did you work on? Can you help us in the same way? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, exactly. It's exactly what they want to know is yeah. how did you do it? And, and is it what they're looking for is, can you do something similar for us? Okay. Yeah. Well, see now my, my goal here is when your book goes to number one, <laughs> I will ask you for a testimonial saying that after this podcast goes out to the millions of people that increased your book sales and it's uh, yeah. an easier thing to do than you think, because th these things do have results and sometimes people don't uh, pursue that. And they're, and as I said, they're, uh, shy about boasting yeah yes well the the, the the many people are shy about boasting what i find is when you start writing down the results you've really helped your clients with it makes it real mm -hmm. and you see that and that funny part of our brain that asks all those questions and says what are you crazy it'll start to calm down because oh wait a minute she does know what she's talking about he yeah. does know about this so mm -hmm. that in itself starts Make, making you a little bit less shy about it. And then realizing that companies and entrepreneurs and people, your clients want help in the area you have expertise in. They mm -hmm. want your help. Mm -hmm. no. And um, it's also good. You, you write about assess and audit. And that is uh, to look at your business plan. And for that, sometimes I think it's really helpful to have a professional take time and to help you figure that out because some of these things are uh, complicated and you want to simplify them so that people can understand them, right? Exactly right. Yep. The, the A part is your assets and take a look at your assets are the services that you're offering. Mm -hmm. And the offers that you make and the you put your offers out some, some on a sales page online if you're selling that way. So your services, you want to be sure that your services fit what your clients really want. Mm -hmm. And that's where I recommend talking to them, really taking a collaborative approach to helping them solve their problems not mm -hmm. simply coming up with an idea yourself of what they should have or should want. Mm -hmm. if you want to collaborate with them and then help them get there. So looking at your assets, your services and offerings is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm, as I was, we're talking, I'm always thinking. And one of uh, my assets, as we see, is offering people uh, a podcast in which they yes. can talk about their book or talk about their services, talk about their product. So I have a, a lot to offer. And I'm sure everyone does. I think it's sometimes just yeah. a matter of taking a pause and finding someone who can identify, help you identify what you need to promote. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you teach the principles of buyer psychology and Okay, this is important. This tells people what their buyers are thinking, what they want. And have, tell us a few stories about buyer psychology. I'm interested in that. What makes people buy? Sure. Okay, good. This is something I've studied forever, ever since I was a salesperson for the first time, account executive for the first time. Uh -huh. but one of the things they're looking to solve, they have challenges that they want to solve. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for someone who can help them solve that specific challenge. There are different stages. Someone may think they want, you know, gee, you know, I've been awfully stressed for a while. You know, I'm, 
I should reduce my stress. I read all these articles. I want to reduce my stress. They're not ready to take action yet. Mm -hmm. They're thinking about it. They know they're stressed. They know it would be good if they do something about it. But they're not ready to move. So if you were to, if they were to read an article or a book on your book on stress management, it mm -hmm. would be, oh yes, okay. I've learned a little more here from the book. They still may not be ready to have someone come in and help them with it. Mm -hmm. So part of it is understanding where the buyer is okay. in the buying process. It's, mm -hmm. And so how you want to find out, for example, if you're talking to a potential client, ask them, how soon do you want to solve this? Uh -huh. yeah. And what will it take for you to solve it? Do you want to work with someone or do you want to take a course? Get their, ask them these questions and get their ideas. Mm -hmm. Then you'll know. So they're not going to buy until they're ready and you're offering something that will help them get what they want. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, well, I hope our listeners have been taking notes like me. I, take, I always take notes when I talk to Jan. Now, Jan, let me ask you a question. I always ask all of my guests before we close out the show. If you could have dinner with anyone in the world, living or beyond, besides me, who would you choose? <laughs> who would you choose? Oh, <laughs> that's a wonderful <laughs> question. And I would have to say, Albert Einstein. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> He's always fascinated me. Mm -hmm. And I, I love his quotes. There are a number of quotes that I really like. One in particular that I'd love to know more about and talk to him more about is creativity is intelligence having fun. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that sounds like it could be a title for another book for you. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> That's very seductive, very seductive. Uh, okay. I want to just thank you so much, Jan, for coming on and sharing your new book with us and some of your insight. And I hope our listeners will go to your website or if you have any more questions, contact Jan. She's the easiest person in the world to talk to, as you can see. <laughs> so now, dear listeners, I hope you've enjoyed our time together today. We've tried to be informative and inspiring. My upcoming guests will all be eclectic, energizing, and exciting, just like Jan was today. Next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time Live, I'm going to have a guest, Chris Miles, back on the show. He's been with us many times, and he talks about money ripples. So <laughs> that tells you what he's all about. <laughs> So my 79-year-old thought for the day is that I'm responsible for what I say. I'm not responsible for what you understand. <laughs> so for now, thank you for entering the No Wine Zone with us today. And please share our stories and our show with everyone you know. And you must remember to stop whining and then start smiling. And if that doesn't work, then you can just start eating chocolate, lots and lots of chocolate, which I try to do every day. <laughs> Goodbye, Jan. And I look forward to having you back with us many, many times. And to Thank my you so much. It's so great to be connected. Yes, it's always fun. Yeah. Uh, my listeners, take care and stay safe until we meet again. We want to thank you for listening to January Jones Sharing Success Stories. Always remember Ms. Jones' personal mantra, if you can think it, you can do it. That's what all of our guests have done with their lives, and so can you. You are the ultimate success coach in your own life. All you need to do will be to start sharing your own story with your family and friends. We hope that our guest stories will encourage you to explore an equation in your future that will combine your creativity, plus connecting with others will enable you to be successful too. Always remember, your passion plus your purpose will equal prosperity as you explore the wonderful world of January Jones.